In the early years of Christianity, during this season of Pascha, this was a period of instruction for the new Christians who had been baptised at Easter. And the Gospel according to St. John was the basis of this instruction, and that is why during Pascha most of the Gospel readings are from the Gospel according to St. John. So why was St. John's Gospel specifically used for this purpose? Well, St. John describes the signs, describes the miracles of Jesus as signs, simia in Greek. These signs point to the sacramental basis of the Christian life. And today's Gospel reading about Jesus healing the blind man is the sixth miracle or sign described by St. John. The readings from St. John's Gospel on the three Sundays after Easter have a common theme and water. Two weeks ago we read about the paralytic who was healed at the pool of Bethesda. Last Sunday we read about Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. And today we read about the blind man who was sent to wash in the pool of Siloam. In this season of Pascha the church wishes us to hear about these three events as they remind us of when we first came to faith in Christ at the waters of baptism. Jesus was coming to the temple on the Sabbath day when he saw the blind man mentioned in today's Gospel. This man had been homeless. And when the disciples saw this, they asked Jesus, Who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The disciples were, of course, wondering if sickness was caused by sin, what sin could have been the cause of this man being born blind? If you remember when the Lord healed the paralytic, he told him, Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. So Jesus indicates that the suffering of the paralytic was indeed caused by sins. However, Jesus rejects the assumption, which was common in the ancient world, that all troubles and all illnesses were the consequences of personal sins, even the sins of one's parents. Jesus answered the disciples' question that the blind man was not born blind because either he had sinned or his parents had sinned. He was born blind so that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Then Jesus spat on the ground and made a clay with a spittle and anointed the eyes of the man. The dust of the ground, water in the form of spittle and a man, these three things remind us of the creation of man in the book of Genesis. Having watered the earth, Jesus created, God created man out of the dust of the ground. So God the Father, and together with the Son, created the earth out of the dust of the ground. And here Jesus, the Word of God, through whom all things were made, performed an act of recreation. He anointed the eyes of the blind man, and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And Siloam was a well-known spring in Jerusalem, and Siloam means saint. Jesus sent the blind man to the pool that he might wash his eyes, which had been anointed with the clay. Thus the blind man believed in Jesus' words, obeyed his command, went and washed, and returned, no longer blind, but seeing. This was a great miracle, as the blind man himself testified. Since time began, never was it heard that any man opened the eyes of one born blind. Just like the paralytic and the Samaritan woman, the blind man had progressively grown in faith. He realised who Jesus was in verse 11, but all he knew was that he was a man called Jesus. By verse 17, he called him a prophet, and finally, in verse 18, he called Jesus Lord and worshipped him. The more he is pressed to state his opinion about Jesus, the man who opened his eyes, the more fervent his faith becomes. And just like the man born blind, we baptised Christians have also called Jesus the Lord and worshipped him. So this healing of the blind man was a great miracle, and Jesus wished 
his miracle to be known to all and leave no, leave no room for doubt. He himself said, I am the light of the world. Jesus enlightened the man both physically and spiritually. He opened the eyes of his body and the eyes of his soul. In the Kentuckian we read in Matins today, and we hear, with eyes spiritually blinded, I come to thee, O Christ, as did he who was blind from birth, and penitently cry unto thee, Thou art the shining light of them that are in darkness. Today's feast is the last Sunday of the season of Pascha, so for the last time we greet each other, um, Christ is risen, Christos and Esti, and may we keep this light of the risen Christ in our hearts through the coming year. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death into those in the tombs he has given life.